Hello and welcome to seven days of shark science. Coming up this week, sharks, 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 and more sharks. Shark. Seven days of shark. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, the European Union has announced a wide range of proposals that aims to bring the bloc further towards its goal of being carbon neutral by the year 2050. Among other things, the proposals look to ban the sale of new petrol or diesel cars within the next two decades and add a tax on jet fuel. The proposals also look to expand on renewable energy production within the EU and modernise older buildings that are not considered energy efficient. It's worth noting that these proposals are not yet in place as they have to be approved by the EU Parliament and the 27 member states of the Union. It's also rumoured that the proposals will be updated to accommodate for growing calls to allow sharks to run for the EU Parliament. In other news, just a quick mention of something I'm sure most of you have seen already. Virgin Galactic sent up its own Sir Richard Branson up to experience what it hopes many more in future will, a trip to the edge of space and zero gravity. It's worth noting that the craft doesn't actually reach what is usually recognised as the beginning of space, 100,000 kilometres, instead falling just short of that. It's also rumoured that Virgin Galactic wants to test the craft with sharks just before accepting flights with a full set of human commercial passengers. And now for the shark news. With a recent study, not technically in the last seven days but not long ago, investigating how abundant sharks were on coral reefs in the Caribbean before human impact and finding some worrying results. Looking at shark scales or denticles from sediments in the Caribbean dating back to around 7,000 years ago and comparing them to denticles in modern sediments, they were able to see how the abundance and diversity of shark reef communities had changed from this time, finding that the accumulation rates of the denticles, which represents shark abundance, has declined by 71% since this point in the mid-Holocene. Fast-swimming pelagic sharks declined the most, and the most severe decline in abundance of sharks happened in the late 20th century, when shark fishing in this part of the Caribbean started. The study also finds that although overfishing is the primary cause of the decline, the decrease in abundance of species that have low commercial value also suggests that other factors could have made this decline worse. Some worrying news for sharks there then, we all know how important these animals are to conserve. And now over to Ben, who is a shark. Thanks, Doug. Now for a brief intermission from the shark science, as this week has also seen the discovery of a new species of Hadrosaurus dinosaur. Named Portelsaurus sosbenati, this animal lived in the early Cretaceous and is based on an almost complete right dentary bone that was discovered in Spain, and displays many unique features that confirm this as a new taxon. Interestingly though, it turns out that Portelsaurus is more closely related to the African Oranosaurus than its other Iberian relatives that lived at the same time. And the discovery of this species also demonstrates that the Iberian Peninsula was inhabited by a very diverse assemblage of this type of Hadrosauriform during the early Cretaceous. And finally for this week is some more shark science that wasn't actually in the last seven days, but it's close enough. A brilliant paper was published recently in which the social structure of bull sharks was investigated, discovering that certain individuals actually show preferred companionship with each other. The paper explains how wildlife tourism will often result in short-term aggregations of animals due to feeding events caused to try and attract them, but that this doesn't necessarily mean that the individuals interact and socialise with each other. However, making observations at a reserve in Fiji on over 3,000 dives between 2003 and 2016, the researchers identified and recorded the presence and interactions between 91 individual bull sharks that repeatedly came to the area to feed, measuring the intensity of associations between pairs and finding that long-term preferred companionships could be observed, as well as deliberate avoidances between individuals. The study therefore finds that the best model to describe the association patterns of the bull sharks is one of preferred companionships and casual acquaintances. Some pretty adorable shark signs there then, finding that sharks can indeed make friends. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this year's Seven Days of Shark Science. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you tomorrow for another Shark Week special.